Hey guys, it's Sean Zin, the Connection Machine, aka the Insurance Doctor, and the podcast for Web Talk Legends, the host. I want to check in with you because we, I love doing this every single Wednesday night, 8 30 p.m. in New Jersey. I am. I know a lot of you are popping on anywhere in the world. Please drop a hashtag live one and then where you're watching from. And as we're going after our conversation, sit back, enjoy. If you like, dislike things, thumbs up, thumbs down. If you have, you know, statements you want to share, let's use this to all learn, grow, and take the story that my guests are going to share with us and just use it and possibly implement some of the ideas and the strategies that we talk about in this conversation. So let me bring on a good friend of mine, Chris Chin. What's going on, man? How are you? Hey, what's going on, Sean? Thanks for having me on here again. Yes, this is going to be a blast, a little different than what we've done in the past. This is really you, 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 you and your story. And we're going to go back, you know, way back. But before, but before we even get to that, who are you, Chris? When you go out to people, how do you introduce yourself? Well, I mean, I just kind of simply introduce myself as Christopher Chin um, or Chris, whatever's easier for, for most people. Um I'm a realtor with Compass right now. I was previously with Nest Seekers, and you know I've been in business for like almost seven years at this point. So it's been a lot of fun. Very, very interesting business. Um, as you know, with real estate, it's a it's a very roller coaster ride um, for the most part itself. But when you're riding on the high and everything, you're you're definitely on top of the mountain for sure. Yeah, man. And you are one that hustles. It's it's a business that you have to put some time in. It's not something it's very easy for many people. It's something that you get a, a license and you have to get after it. And you have to know how to do that. And what were some areas that you were able to get some education? I think it's lacking in the real estate world. There's some books here and there. But how did you learn what you're doing today? Um, I was fortunate because, you know, when I started off with my first company at Keller Williams, I met a lot of great agents who just kind of helped me, guide me, in, you know, guide me in the right direction. Um, I got to give a lot of credit to Lucy Thompson, who is actually still with KW right now. She put me on my first open house and gave me my first real opportunity to really just shine and see, you know, just to do what I do. And she allowed me to have the freedom I wanted to have to promote the open houses however I wanted to do it. And same with a lot of people in KW. Amy Barakowski was another example of that as well. Whenever they allowed me to host their open houses, I was putting in my own little graphic design um, twist on all the the flyers that was going out there and then next thing you know because i was doing 300 elkwood in new providence you know i ended up getting a listing in new providence afterwards from an old friend of mine um uh, who i went to high school with uh, who i went to high school with and she um saw a couple of my posts and she ended up reaching out to me and that was like one of my first big opportunities and no, that's awesome i mean you said a mouthful there as far as talking about graphic design real estate Having, you know, going back to the high school days, how were, who was Chris back in the day in high school? Uh, I was, I was pretty social. Uh, I was probably a kid that talked a little too much, but I was always a little, um, I was always obsessed with the creative side of things. Uh, I was an artist. I started off with drawing, then eventually went into graphic design uh, when I went to Votech. Um, and they taught me a lot about like commercial design. And when I was in Votech specifically, I was doing, um, I basically just, got rid of all my electives in high school and just started taking a tech class. And I was just literally just doing projects for, you know, the fire department, the state or et cetera, you know, and that helped me a lot because that already put me in a situation where if I needed to design something under, you know, a pressure situation, mm -hmm. I was very really geared towards that, you know, for high school. And eventually when I got out of high school, I got a huge opportunity to um, intern for a company called BBDO uh, Worldwide, which is one of the biggest um, marketing companies at, and, you know, ad agencies in the, in the world. Um, I was doing graphic design work for companies like Pepsi. I was doing Motorola, AT&T, Gillette. Um, I remember doing a campaign uh, for Gillette specifically, and we were just designing some, some stuff based off a new razor that they had. And next thing you know, I was drinking with John Cena and our you know, at our little bar party over there that we had. Mm. That is awesome, man. Now, with graphic design, can you go into detail what exactly that is for those that don't know? Oh, uh, basically, it's be able to create a vision, you know, create a vision on 
you know, on a, on a digital level. So like I have a pro I use programs like Adobe Illustrator, Adobe InDesign. So if I have a flyer design in mind specifically, like a lot of agents like to use, um, you know, the go-to marketing websites that they, that they offer to all of us and everything. But for me personally, I always wanted to have a little twist. So I, so basically what I do is I'll draw out whatever I want to have, or I'll visualize exactly how the, the piece want, you know, I want a piece to go and I'll put it onto a, onto a, you know, onto the platform and eventually I can print it out or I can post it over, over the internet. I've been able to design books for, for listings and all the stuff that I will just, I would just send to the print shop and they'll print everything out for me and then we'll get that moving. Um, and just little stuff like that. And eventually I learned how to do web design. So I created my Unlock Engine Homes website with that, uh, which actually helped me get some leads at some point. I actually closed a couple of deals because of that. And, you know, Facebook, I was able to put out new material on a weekly basis. So let's just say, example, hypothetically, an agent has to do a price reduction, printing out new material typically would be very expensive or very tedious. So they'll just black it out or something like that or use some white out. I could just create something brand new, print something out and just here we go. We're immediately fixed. You know, every single week I could have a new listing flyer, you know, specifically designed for this specific day. So that helped a lot also. No, using that artwork is, uh, it's key. It's when you're selling real estate, you have something that you're, you know, selling. If it's a service, it's more difficult. That's what I found with, with insurance, for example, or for those that are in network marketing, there's things that you got to, if it's a service, it's difficult, but in real estate, you can really jazz it up and having beautiful artwork really is beneficial for those listings, right? Well, people don't realize about real estate what makes it different in a lot of businesses is that we wear a lot of hats. You know, we wear the role of obviously your everyday salesman. We are marketers. We are advertise, you know, marketers slash advertisers. We, you know, in my case, also the graphic designer. We, you know, the videographer as well. With a lot of our projects, I do a lot of cuts and edits and everything. So we, you know, I often use companies like VHT or something like that. But I'll take their videos and actually recut everything and re put, you know, redo my own little twist and everything and all stuff. So it doesn't sound like. We're using old school music or something i have here doesn't sound like someone else so right. right you know um i get to pick out exactly what music i want to put on everything i get to pick out exactly where i want specific cuts to come in you know just to enhance the experience that all of my clients get to have whenever they're dealing you know whenever they're working with me specifically excellent now we have a lot of people popping on i want to say hello we have scott gerard deanna we have charlene Lorraine, Bo, you guys are awesome. If you're popping in right now, please drop a comment where you're watching from if you haven't already. And if you have anything to add to the conversation, you agree, disagree, thumbs up, thumbs down, or drop some comments. That's wonderful as well. Now, I would love to find out what are some hobbies? Well, if you're watching, guys, drop a hobby, whatever your favorite hobby is. And Chris, what are some hobbies that you're doing besides real estate? Well, I like to play basketball um, during the weekends, whenever I get a chance. Um, I like just hanging out with the community. Uh, I live in a nice apartment complex and I have a couple of people that, you know, I throw parties with. So I created actually a group chat in my, in my, you know, my complex. So we're always just constantly networking and just chilling. So it's actually another networking opportunity I created here also, too, if you really think about it in that sense. Um, I'm just meeting new people on a regular basis. And who knows, you know, if they ever buy a house or need to sell a house, they might give me a call. You know, um, it's all about just creating opportunities on a regular basis, right? Um, mm -hmm. But overall, it just comes natural because I like to meet new people. You know, as you as you know, when we're when we're out together and everything, I have no problem with just having a conversation with just a stranger itself because that's just just who I am naturally and everything. And it just became so much easier to integrate that plus the the marketing and graphic design thing into real estate. You know, so it's all kind of like one and the same. I love painting also. Uh, I'm not as good at painting as I am with drawing, but <laughs> that's awesome. It's what is it a good? I think a good stress reliever. You know, I I love to work out, and that's my a great thing that re relieves stress, makes me feel great. But painting in high school, I was good at painting. I did some drawing as well. I haven't done it in years, but I, it's something that is a good stress reliever for a lot of people. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, same with graphic design in some way. Even when I'm sitting around just doing my flyers for real estate and all stuff, it's kind of relaxing because like it's just. Just seeing what you, you know, envisioning something and putting it on paper and actually manifesting it, it's like it's just like your dreams, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? It's just I'm just so, so relaxing with just kind of going after it and just creating that image. No, I like what you said before. Yeah, you're at your complex and you have a group of people that are friends, that you're playing some basketball, but you're also doing some networking. 
how do you go about who what kind of tips can you give to people that are watching about networking and it could be in person and it could also be online see here's the thing um ryan sirhan says it all the time people hate being sold but love be, love shopping with friends and i actually very very strongly believe in that philosophy because of the idea um you know i just like naturally meeting new people you know so advice that i want to give people specifically is that if you're out there networking you don't need to sell people on a regular basis you just gotta be yourself you know people will accept you for who you are and if you are a professional what you do and everything will naturally just come out you know um I think that's a habit a lot of new agents have, which I've noticed whenever they go into listing appointments, you know, they try to oversell, 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 which is something, you know, obviously when I first started and first got into the business that we were trained to do, because that's just the, the structured way to do things specifically based off of what our broker tells us. But eventually it's not about doing that specifically, but actually integrating that with just being yourself. You know, sure, I'll hand like back in the day, I used to take marketing flyers and I'll actually go through the flyer, what I'll do with the client and everything. Now I'll just give them the flyer and ask them if they have any questions specifically on the flyer and we'll just you know now my conversation is more geared towards getting to know you the client specifically what do you like do you like you know do you like sports do you you know you know well, what kind of cars do you drive you know what what do you like to do what kind of vacations you know let me know more about your family let me know about more about your kids so this way when those opportunity comes whenever i do want to reach out to you for those specific reasons and all you know those specific reasons i can actually send you a gift on your, on your birthday or something you know now we have you know something that we can have a conversation with besides real estate now we're building a friendship i can invite this person over to my pool you know or eventually with the, my my favorite things is when whenever my clients offer to get you know cook me a meal that's amazing you know um it's just little things like that because like it's just showing your value as a human being which i think is something that we you know we forget to do very often when we're in you know especially when we're in the sales business oh yeah i mean building relationships and you do that if you're across the table with someone having breaking some bread having some drinks talking about your day you're going to go deep with people and that's what you should be doing so that yeah when a birthday comes up you can send them a nice nice gift not everyone does that and you will stick out you'll have that top of mind and that's a key thing today you said Ryan Surhan, he's on the million dollar listing for those that are in different parts of the world. How is you were trained by him or you went through one of his one of his courses? I took the I'm a part of the sell like Surhan course and I actually did get a chance to meet him when I was with Nest Seekers, um, al along with um, Peggy, Peggy Z and a couple of other um, reality TV stars from the real estate market. Actually, a little fun fact is you go to episode two and four of the you know the last season of million dollar listing in new york you will actually see me on those two episodes um so that was a fun fact um that was a very very fun experience just being a part of that and being part of that film session and everything that was crazy here's but, something you know everyone if anyone's watching and teacher tim what's going on man thanks for joining us if you watch these million dollar listings and, and selling there's one out in la there's different ones on yeah. netflix and they have all the good times. It's all the partying. It's never that easy or that fun all the time, right? No, the real estate market can be pretty grueling and it, it can be pretty, um, it can be kind of demoralizing at times and everything. But if you have a strong head and strong will and everything, if you're willing to get through and all stuff, you will, you will get through it. I think a lot of times they say where, you know, the percentage of real estate that fail specifically. You know, I think those are people specifically that aren't willing to put the extra step in because they realize this business is not an easy business by any means. You know, um, getting through a process of when, you're, when we're doing a sale on a property, we're dealing with so many different people and so many different parties to ensure that the deal is done. We don't, you know, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, we're not just dealing with another realtor. We're not just dealing with the seller and just the buyer specifically. That's just four parties alone. We're dealing with the mortgage lender. We're dealing with a title agent. We're dealing with inspectors. We're dealing with the town. We're dealing with two attorneys. So... This deal itself specifically touches 10 to 20 mm -hmm. different hands just in the group specifically, not not even talking about, I'm not even talking about paralegals and people that work for, for the mortgage lenders and all those other people specifically, but like it touches so many different parties before the deal actually gets closed. You know, there's a lot of pressure situations and that's where I say that where our psychology aspect comes in and everything, where we're actually being a psychologist at some point where we have to calm our clients down. We get to hear all the stories about, you know, why they love this house and how little Joe over there grew up and was measuring himself on that wall for, you know, up until he was five foot eight, you know, um, 
you know, how how grandma used to come here and bake cookies and everything and how they can never forget the memories and why that value resides in the home, you know, and understanding that aspect of itself and everything, that's where we get a, where we have to understand people as a whole, because now, you know, I'm not just talking to you as just a client specifically, I'm talking to you as a friend as well, you know, someone who wants to work with you to get you the best deal, someone who's not about the commission check specifically, but getting you whatever makes you the happiest. Love it, man. There's a lot of people that are popping in that are entrepreneurs. And there are people that do real estate insurance. There could be people do things that are network marketing, multi-level marketing, what have you. Yeah. You had you talked about having those you know, down times, those frustrations that we might have when you're making those calls and it doesn't go that way. What are some ways for your mindset that you could help others that are watching today when they have those days that are not going well for them? Honestly, um, I think reading helps a lot. To be honest with you, um, I like I love having a, I have an Audible subscription, so like I love doing audiobooks. Um, if you don't want to go through books and everything, music obviously always helps. But you know, audiobooks specifically because I think it trains you to get into the right mindset. You know, it's not about following any specific book um, by the script itself, but understanding aspects of it and putting it together in one big picture. You know, and understanding that aspect of it itself because never nothing's ever black and white. You know, everything's sitting within that gray line. You know, most people like to look at things in a black and white line, but everyone, everything is directly in the gray line specifically. And that's why you got to take details of what one person says and take details, details of what another person says and try to find what works best for you specifically. And I think training myself on a regular basis um, helps um, during the downtimes because it takes away a lot of stress because it just shows me different ways to readjust myself and maybe i'm doing things a little bit maybe i need to try something a little bit differently you know than what i'm used to because maybe what i've been doing for a while is a little dry maybe maybe i'm getting too comfortable a lot of times mm. what we don't realize is that you know when we're when we're hitting those big commission checks and everything we drop the ball sometimes because we get very very comfortable because all the deals are coming in but the thing is like every well the well dries eventually you know, you need to keep on plucking and keep on building. Um, I was actually having a conversation about this with someone earlier today about how real estate is not just about setting up for the deal for today, because if I bring a deal in today, that's whatever. But the thing is, what we're actually doing is every every um, season we're setting up for the next, mm -hmm. you know, because whatever I'm whatever my success is for in the summertime, it's been because of my hard work that came in from the, from the fall and the springtime and the wintertime because of all the marketing i was doing because at that particular point that's when people are ready to sell they've been seeing everything i've been posting they've been seeing everything i've been doing and obviously everything else that comes in between that is also from whatever they're seeing that's happening off of the summertime mm. so when they see what's happening during the summertime they're giving you opportunities closer to the winter time and the fall time and you're, it's an ongoing cycle you're planting seeds for the future it's something that it, it happens you put some time in now it, you will have some fruits down the road if you are consistent Sure. Scott said he hates to read, but he loves music. Deanna, deep breathing, meditation, that's all good for, for her. It's important to have whatever works for you to consistently do. That's a key thing. And I think it's it's a wonderful thing to have an outlet when you have those down times. Because it, yeah. it happens. You know, not everything's gonna go well for you all the time. No, definitely not. This business is, is this business is, is very, very chaotic and such, you know, like we, that's why like, you know, when you get comfortable, like a lot of realtors get comfortable with like working with specific investors, but investors change jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes they may not want to be an investor anymore. So if they stop doing, if they stop building and selling houses also, they want to do something else. What are you going to do? How are you going to continue growing your business? You know, that's why, you know, the constant growth of networking and constant, you know, the constant seed planting is probably the most important thing. You know, we are gardeners in a sense, and the way we're planting seeds in people's minds on a regular basis is like, like you said earlier today, we want to be the people that's the top of the mind. Whenever you're thinking about real estate, I want you to think of me. Whenever you're driving down the bill, you know, streets and seeing another realtor's face on the billboard, the, I, I want you to be off put by that in a sense. And then if you're thinking about selling a house, you're still going to call me. You know, I mean, regardless of what it is and everything, I just want to constantly remind you that, you know, whatever whatever deal that comes my way, whatever kind of real estate deal it is, whether, whether it's a, a, you know, a listing, a buyer, you know, or even a tenant investor specifically, you know, I want to know that, you know, I want my clients to know specifically that I'm going to give 120% every single time to ensure that this, this deal gets closed or to ensure that you, your best interest is met. 
No, it's, that's important to have somebody in their corner that is really working as hard as you, you're you working. For those who are just popping in, don't forget, drop a comment where you're watching us from. Here's something for everyone that's watching. What is your favorite number? I like to hear this. Do you have a favorite number, Chris? My favorite number is actually three. Why is it Why is it so important to you? Uh, I just feel like my name has always been, you know, I've been always sent around to number three. My my name is, you know, my first initial, my last initial is the third letter of the alphabet. My birthday is on October 3rd. Um, three's just been kind of around me the whole time. So it's just been something I've been very comfortable with. <laughs> and here's a fact that I learned from Chris a while back when we went for lunch, then we had some coffee. You're heavily into sneakers. You're a sneakerhead, right? I am a little bit. Um not as much as I used to be. Now I'm just more of a shoe head, but like I do have a nice collection of shoes and Jordans and everything. Now I just like to collect it every day. Um, I haven't worn them in a very long time, but now I just kind of buy them to display them just as like little trophies, I guess. <laughs> do you, there's people, and I don't understand this. When I was growing up, Jordan was the man. He had his sneakers. Everyone would buy his sneakers and he would wear them and then throw them out. Today, it seems like those Jordans are still out there. People wear them use them and then clean them and then sell them there's a market for sneakers market. right hey there's a market for everything these days like hey if back when i was a kid and everything i wish i could go back in time and yell at my dad for throwing my old pokemon cards away i can tell you that much because <laughs> <laughs> pokemon that was a popular thing at one Those point cards right? are still worth like hundreds and thousands of dollars and everything like and but baseball cards went out the window like baseball cards was a was a thing back in the day, but it seems like that doesn't have a market right now. <laughs> I'm just like wow, but it's something that is you know popular with the the now. You know, it seems like I don't understand it. I wear sneakers all the time for working out, going for runs. I get them dirty. There's kids that'll walk <laughs> differently, so it won't crease and all that stuff. It's crazy. <laughs> but I want to change gears now and talk about video. How sure. important is video for you? And for those that are watching, some of some of them have been on this podcast and some of them are like, Sean, 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 I can't do this. I don't want, I, I'm nervous. What are some tips you can share with people about video and getting over that, being uncomfortable? Um, just look yourself in the mirror and just have a conversation with yourself, with yourself for a while because you, you'll start noticing different facial expressions that you'll be throwing out there that you shouldn't be throwing out there. You'll start noticing different signs um, and that's when you'll be able to kind of catch those and kind of train yourself. Like when I first started, once again, shout out to Lucy Thompson and Amy Burakowski from KW. Um, they gave me opportunities to do their open houses and, you know, thanks to Michalina constantly doing her little videos uh, with all of her staging pro um, properties and everything. Um, I started doing that as well. And that was before most of the realtors were doing it at that point. And I was doing, you know, Facebook lives at that time. And I started doing Instagram lives and, you know, um, as you're staring at yourself in a, in, in selfie mode, recording a video, it's kind of, um, it's kind of a little daunting sometimes and everything. Yeah. You'll start noticing little things and everything. And at first, um, I was cutting the videos and like, if I catch a mistake, I would end the video and just restart it. Like I'm trying to just. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes like I remember a couple of times I did it. I did it like six times on one property. And eventually I just got comfortable and to the point where now where if I'm actually sitting directly across the camera, if I have a videographer actually sitting across the camera specifically or filming me directly across the, the room, I've been able to one take um one take from um, you know property scripts and everything without actually using any kind of physical script. I could just go in there saying this is what it is. Oh, my name is Christopher Chen. I'm with Compass Real Estate. Um, we are here located at one two three Main Street. You know this is a four bed, two and a half bath home. Um, is located within blah 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 blah. You know, and I'll be able to shoot that right off the spot now because I've been so comfortable with doing it for the last seven years. Oh, it it takes time. Like I started doing video back in 2018. And my first video, I share it every once in a while so people can see. And and Scott was saying he looks in, he's he's had conversations in the mirror before. It happens, and it's hard those lives. But the more consistent you do it, the more comfortable you become. You're more competent for now. The confident happens, and now you're fine, and you can do something like this and just shoot, you know, whatever from the heart. That's what if you're authentic and you're coming from the heart, whatever you're coming out of your mouth, everyone has value. You just have to be not afraid to share that value. That's what I'm I'm always get in front of the camera and watch how it changes you. It's a powerful thing. 
I agree with that. That's why even doing things like this helps out substantially as well, because, you know, normally we're sitting down having a conversation, a cup of coffee. It's a normal conversation. Like we're treating this like a regular cup of coffee conversation right now. You know, this is exactly what it is. You know, while we are also still mining people in the chat room, shout out to Scott Gerard, Charlie Smith, Deanna, uh, Dina Creates. Shout out to all of you guys. See, we're still acknowledge, acknowledging that your existence. Um, regardless of the fact is it's just that we have we built a comfort comfort zone because we've been behind the camera for so long right it, um it feels like it's nothing it just it's just like walking on water i mean you know but we can't walk on water it's just like walking on the, <laughs> walking on the ground right now you know? like, it's just it's just natural you know it just feels it just feels like we're having a cup of coffee right now without actually physically hanging out with each other oh yeah and i love using like Streamyard rather than zoom because it gives you more of a better picture when we did we do some video when we're in person it's funny because now we're sitting there we have a camera and we're talking to a camera at a starbucks at a restaurant what have you and everyone else like who are these guys what's going on here because you're doing something it creates a fomo fear of missing out like i need to know what's going on with these guys why are they on camera it's just a fun thing to do with your people that you're networking with put them on camera good let's go live real quick and just talk about each other Exactly. And, you know, and that's just, that's just go to, um, that just goes back to how we get business itself and everything, having great conversations with great people and everything is what creates business. Once again, going back to what Ryan says, people hate, you know, hate being sold, but love shopping with friends. You know, we're building friendships and we're building a network. So this way, you know, hopefully someone like Dina over here, you know, has an Instagram, maybe we'll follow her or Charlene or Scott Gerard. We'll give them a follow to follow us back. And now, you know, who knows? Maybe one day we'll have a cup of coffee with them. Maybe one day they'll come out to the New Jersey market and want to consider looking at a property out here. And the first people that they're going to think of is us. You know, it's going to be me. Or as, when it comes to insurance, they're going to think about you. You know, that's just because we're the first person that comes to mind because we're building this network by just being ourselves you know we gotta just go back to the whole idea that you know we just gotta be ourselves whether, whether it's behind the camera whether it's you know out there in the general public itself you know it's it's the same thing you know we gotta carry our personas in a certain way regardless of who we are you know we gotta carry our personas with class no matter where we are specifically you know because we gotta treat people the way they want to be treated whether yes. we are in front of their face whether or not in front, in front of their face <laughs> Yeah, if you're on this, you're on face to face stuff. It's it just gets you. I always say you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable and watch how it changes you. You're going to be you're more enthusiastic. The passion comes through more. That's why I think everyone should get on camera. The sooner, the better, because it'll only help you with your business. Now, let's round out our night. Let's talk about there's a lot of us here. We're online, right? And a lot of people use social media. Yeah. What are some habits that you use that can help others maybe that are not as consistent what are some things like i do a motivation post in the morning there's some things i do during the day what are some you know daily habits you might have for social media um social media is all about engagement so when i say engagement specifically is not constantly posting things that you're trying to sell people with you know, so if I was constantly posting just property listings or stuff about real estate, people eventually get bored because people that don't want to hear about real estate all day is just going to eventually turn me off, especially if they're seeing three or four or five feeds in a single day. So get comfortable, get comfortable with building social media, you know, you know, putting posts up there specifically about things that you're comfortable with. I like food, you know, so a lot of times I go to restaurants and this gives us opportunity to build networks with these restaurants as well or local businesses. Um, I take a lot of pictures, take videos, you know, and a lot of these owners are actually surprisingly very, you know, very open to being on camera as well. Mm -hmm. So hop into your feeds. Now you got them to follow you and anybody that supports that business will start following you as well. So now you're just increasing your network network. And eventually what people don't realize is that if you crack the 5,000 mark, um, you actually, you know, you can actually start being an influencer and now you could sponsor other companies, you know, I got an email from Affluencer. I'm not at the 5,000 mark yet, but you know, once I hit that 5,000 mark, I can start doing promo, you know, promotions for something like, you know, Wayfair and they'll pay you like $150 a post, you know, or coal or something like that. So those are little opportunities that you get when you build your network up, but that's, it starts off doing the small things, working with little businesses because people love food. You want to give people something that they're constantly looking for. You want to feed their appetite, whether it's food, whether it's, you know, clothing, fashion, 
whatever you like, you know, something that's going to constantly keep that audience engaged because you want to mix it up a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You know, you want to add a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper and a little bit of the, the you know, the, the fun stuff and a little bit of the real estate stuff. And then you want to mix it up and everything. So this way people just don't look at you as a sales, you know, sales robot. Yeah, like I tell people, rules of four. One thing, it could be a post about whatever you do, whatever business it is. These other three, yeah, it could talk about food. You could talk about exercise. You could talk about, you know, self-improvement, helping others. That's a key thing besides just put pitching and service and product all day long. Exactly. Is there any final thoughts you can share with us today, Chris? Yeah. I want to give a shout out to Dina saying that she loves creating polls. That's another engagement aspect also as well. That actually helps substantially. Like if you're putting, you know, post up with polls, you know, just asking questions, it's a way to just keep, you know, keep people engaged. It's and very, 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 very useful. I'll, I'll piggyback conversation starters. Do yes. a question and that'll get you engagement, guys. Everyone looks for comment uh, likes and loves. It's not likes and loves. It's comments. So if you say and do a post, what was your mascot in high school? Every one of us that are on this has, went to high school. You'll get all these different things that are comments. And then what, what do I do? I say, well, the next comment you do is, were you a jock or were you into books? And that'll just keep spiraling your comments. And you'll have hundreds of comments. That's what you want for your algorithm. Yep, 100%. Uh, I will answer Tim's question over here. Why I joined, you know, I joined Web Talk over two years ago, and um, I haven't posted anything since. Why is that? Honestly, um, I'm just starting to get, you know, adjusted to this platform. Um, at that particular point, I wasn't really as familiar, and actually, Sean has been very excellent with actually explaining, you know, the little details of this app to me. And I'm actually going to be a lot more engaging on this app specifically because of the little, you know, caveats that it definitely does have. Hey. Chris, this is now look, teacher Tim said he'll come on this in September. He asked you, you know, why you haven't been engaging on web talk. Maybe we can get something on him and we'll put him on the spot. That's what we're talking about. Hey, hey, hey. It's all love. <laughs> I appreciate it. You know what I mean? No, it's it, awesome. It's motivation for me to get on here a little bit more. And I appreciate the fact that, you know, somebody wants to see more content. So yes. hey, let's bring on the content over here to web talk as well. And if any one of you wants to be on the on this web podcast, please reach out to me. I have everything. I think August we're done. September, October already booked. November, if you want to get on, let's go. I think teacher Tim, we might have to squeak you in. We have another one on this <laughs> Friday. This Friday we have another one. It's very important. Definitely check it out. Don't forget to check out the description. Look at all the links that are there. Connect with Chris. Check out what he's doing on other platforms as well. And I hope that wherever you are on the world, I hope you guys have. And thanks so much, Chris, for spending some time with me. I hope everyone has an awesome rest of your day. Thank you, brother. I hope you have a good one.